spot of tea. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to How to Cake It. That's terrible. What if I'm more like, hello? <laughs> Hello, welcome to me channel, How to Cake It. That one a little. <laughs> it's How to Cake It Tuesday, and this week's theme is Cake de la Cake. We're getting fancy. You fancy, huh? You fancy, huh? Drake, I'm waiting. I'm making an elegant, fancy tiered cake that's robin's egg blue, cream, and gold. And it's for a very special occasion for a very special little girl named Brianna. Hi, Brianna. I carefully remove the cakes from their pans. I have nine cakes to remove. And then I, of course, level them with my ruler and serrated knife so that I can fill them with a gorgeous vanilla buttercream. I'm actually gonna take my buttercream one step further this week and I'm gonna add a Madagascar bourbon vanilla bean to the buttercream to further enhance the vanilla flavor. I got these vanilla beans in France, so I cherish them. I really do. It's hard to let go. I begin to fill all my layers with the vanilla buttercream and stack them so that I can crumb coat them and chill them. Remember, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, share it, spread the word. Subscribe, hit the button. Simple, really, actually. Hit the button, just pop your little finger on it. <laughs> I find it helpful to actually put a board in the middle whenever I make a cube or what's called like a double barrel cake, meaning it's twice as high as it normally is. And the reason for this is you don't wanna cut a giant slice that's too big for a plate. I'd eat that slice, but it's troublesome. First, I have to insert some dowels in the bottom square cake so that I can place the top square on top, making it a complete cube and then I have to ice this baby. Icing a cube is so much harder than icing a round cake. Cube cake! I wanna make a Rubik's Cube. Write that down. Sounds like I have like helpers in the back. Write down Rubik's Cube, thank you. And where's my tea? Thank you. Can you polish my Crocs? Thank you. Don't tell anyone I'm wearing Crocs. Once the cube is to my liking, I'm gonna move on to my round cakes, which are so much easier. I have two colors of fondant to work with. They are robin's egg blue and cream. I'm gonna start out with my robin eggs blue fondant. No, it's not eggs, it's robin egg blue. <laughs> I'm gonna start out with my robin egg blue fondant. Actually, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's robin's egg, it's a little bit on the green side. If you know the proper color, pop a comment below, let me know. I'm covering two of the sides in the robin's egg blue and then two of the sides and the top in cream. How do you like that? Do you fancy that? I roll it up on a French rolling pin and I unravel it around two sides of the cake. I'm going to trim the top to meet the cake and I'm also gonna trim the sides and then I'm gonna use two fondant smoothers to sort of smooth the fondant to that one corner. So when I use one piece of fondant to cover both sides, it actually makes it harder for me to get a straight edge. Will I do it? Insert like suspenseful music right here. Maybe like British crime, right? And the lights go out, will she get a straight edge? Good. It's like clue. Then I also need to roll out a piece of the Tiffany blue. Wow! Then I also need to roll out a <laughs> I can't decide what color it is. I chose to use one piece of fondant to cover both sides at the same time because I didn't want to seam at that corner. I have to roll out a bit more cream fondant in a square just to cover the top of my cube, nice and square. And then I use a ruler and uh, what is that called? The protractor, the triangle ruler, to really help me straighten the edge. Geometry was more helpful in my life than I thought at the time that I was learning it. And now I have a nice, like this, look, cube.
Oh, my cakes are the sharpest cake in the game. I should be like a rapper, but for cakes. You know what I'm saying? There's Drake and then there's cake. Yo, my cakes got the sharpest edges in the game, okay? My smoother, me and my peeps, my fondant, my smoother, I, I smooth it out. Smooth it out, yo, what song is that from? Oh, it's Naughty by Nature, Hip Hop Array. Look it up. I'm not British and I'm not a rapper. Surprise! Now I place this beautiful, smooth, crisp cube into my fridge and move on to covering my round tiers. Two of the round tiers are robin's egg. And then the very top little round tier is going to be cream. I'm gonna move on to the gold detail for this cake. I start by rolling out my cream fondant nice and thin, and then I'm gonna cut out all the pieces that I need. So the strips, the polka dots, and the rings. And once I'm happy with them, I'm going to dust them with a golden luster dust. Gets in your hair, gets on your face. First time I ever used luster dust, I was completely unaware and it was everywhere. And then I had to blow my nose and I was like, I'm blowing gold, literally. Now it's time to decorate. This is the fun part. This is where I see my vision come together. This is the part I enjoy the most. So what I'm gonna do is frame each color block with gold. Well, no, 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 I lied. I'm gonna frame, <laughs> actually, I'm gonna frame the robin's egg color block with gold, and I'm gonna frame the cream color block with robin's egg. <laughs> this is confusing. Be very careful when you're working with gold because just the moisture and the heat from your fingers takes it off the cake. You kind of can't avoid that, but just be really careful to be delicate with it. First round here, which will be directly on top of the cube, is getting polka dots. So polka dots, although they're simple to cut out, they have a pattern. So what I like to do is measure the circumference of my cake and the height of my cake, and then work out mathematically um, <laughs> the spacing of the polka dots. Next, it's time to apply the finishing rings to my three round cakes. So I just sort of pick them up really carefully and place them right on the round cakes and they fit perfectly. It's actually a little bit easier to center the next tier on this first round tier because the inside of the ring happens to be the exact same size as the next tier. I left out a very important detail on this cake. I needed to add a B for Brianna. Hi! So I just roll out a little bit of my Robin's Egg fondant, cut out a B with this really nice cutter that I have, and place it on the top tier. I'm gonna turn it on its side so that it's looking straight at you. Just pop it on the side. I think this cake is fit for the queen. It's totally fit for the queen. It's really fancy because this is all about fancy. This is a fancy, sparkly, glittery. It's not quite glittery, but it, it's definitely shiny. I'm glad that my cousins and my great aunt are across the pond, as they say, because I'm doing a terrible British accent. Terrible, actually. As I mentioned, this cake is for one of my best friend's daughters, but we have a little problem because I normally eat and reveal the inside of the cake for all of you. So what am I gonna do? What shall I do? Brianna doesn't know that there was four tiers. So if I bring three tiers, she doesn't know that there was a fourth tier. You're not gonna tell her, right? I'm 
going to pick it up and eat it like a petty fool. I feel so sophisticated, really. If there's any other accents you want me to try, let me know. I won't do them, but let me know. I'm just curious. I'm trying to channel Bridget Jones. It's, um, it's not working, but I love that movie.